Hi, I'm Jeremy Jones. You're watching Snowfix. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 61 of Snowfix. How's the team this week? The team is very well, and Tim, Tim. can't stop uh, smiling. Why are you smiling? Because it snowed last night, and, you know, all this week there's severe con uh, weather conditions all across the Alps, so we're going to get lots more snow. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Good stuff. Jules, Ooh, yes. what have you been doing? I have uh, been putting together, with a little help, uh, the first installment of the Swatch O'Neill Big Mountain Pro, where I just stocked... Uh, the world's best skiers and snowboarders in that camera, so we'll be showing that this week. Cool, we've also got some news and feedback, but first, let's join Andreas Hatveit in Norway, where he's going to show us how he got so damn good at skiing. Um, it's been good growing up in the mountains, like the skiing, of course, and, and just the nature itself. And really, though, that's, it's kind of a small town, but still, we got like Holling Skyver Cheese and Throw over here. That's where I learned how to ski and stuff. Started skiing when I was like two years old. Skied ever since. Like, it's really good for powder skiing, backcountry. So, finally got to do some of that this year. It's been a long time, but. This year we finally got some good snow. It's the best snow year in like seven years, so it's fun cruising some powder again. I like it a lot up here. Like the scenery is beautiful. It's it's not many places in the world where you can wake up and have that view out of your bedroom, you know. My parents helped me out and, and built like a small park behind my house, so so that's where I skied every day when I got home from school. It was usually dark, we put up lights, so I just hit the switch and started hiking up and down. I counted one night and I hiked and jumped like 47 times and I did that every night after school and that's probably why I got good at skiing because I did it so much. We finally got to build a big, big jump this year up in uh, the top of the mountain. They got tons of snow up there and we scooped together a big pile of snow and we just got done building the jump the other day so I'm stoked to go hit it. It's going to be great. Yeah, right now I'm on my way to the local ski resort, Hollywood Scott Ski Center. Uh, we built a big jump up top, so we're going to try and hit it today. It's not that many people out, but still, it's beautiful. All right, let's do some news now. Um, Jules, have you got a follow-up for us on the story about the guy who fell out of a chairlift in Shem? Uh, the cable car. Yeah, yeah I do actually, because uh, uh, you might remember last week we reported on it, and there was speculation that those guys might be charged with manslaughter. Well, that's not the case. I'm quoting the police. They said that it was just a stupid bit of fun that went wrong. So the cable cars are going to remain open, and the guys are going home back to their wives and kids. Hey, is, is it not dangerous that they uh, are going to remain open? Well, they're going to change them this year anyways, so... Cool. No, the doors aren't literally open. They pushed... <laughs> they, they were drunk and they pushed their friend out. Banter. Yeah. Talking of accidents, um, the Sunday before last, you might have seen or heard about this, a skier in a downhill, Matthias Lanzinger. Aww. He broke his left no, leg in the World Cup. It was pretty severe, I don't hear. I don't hear. Um, if you saw it. A horrible update. It, he actually had to have it amputated because oh. um, there was too much tissue damage for it to recover. That's so, so that's gnarly. That's horrific. Um, but you'll be pleased to know, guys, 
I know these guys are both a bit squeamish. I thought you might be interested no to way. see. I'm uber I'm squeamish. I'm not of, watching uh, it. This is uh, the actual crash itself. I'll just put it in full screen so you can see it. I can't see watch it. I can't actually no, see anything. Watching. Okay, you okay there you go. Jules, are you gonna watch? I can't watch it. You have to watch. You have to watch. I don't really want to watch this, but for sound. the good of Snowfix. No, I can't watch it. I can't see anything. I'll look at Charlie's face. Right, here he comes. I don't want to hear the soundtrack either. Can you see this, Charlie? Here's the crash. Oh, look at the leg, left leg. Oh my oh. god, oh my god, oh my god, fucking hell. There's a replay. Tell me when it's over. It's not over yet, Jules. You can still get a chance to catch no, it. No, I don't want to. Let's see this again, the slow motion. <sighs> Bad times. I'm talking of snap legs. Mick D, you remember having Michael Deschanel on the show? Yeah. He just broke his femur as oh. well. So get, get well soon, Mick. Yes. So there's a lot of uh, precautions being put into place in different resorts to avoid accidents, isn't there? Like last week we were talking about the helmets um, in, Michigan. in Michigan, and now we have to wear them in the pipe in Avoria. Uh, Park City and Deer Valley in Utah have just introduced a new rule. It's called it's a Class B misdemeanor. If you're basically if you hit someone and you injure them because you were found to be out of control, they can now press charges and you can get up to six months jail time and a thousand dollar fine. Ouch. That's a yeah. bit extreme. It's good. It's good precaution, though. Um, can yeah. I just pick a little quote that I saw in that story? Yep. They actually said that snowboarders are the most dangerous because they are too slow at turning. So that's uh, just that's just because we straight just line everything because we're so extreme. Probably written by a skier, though, wasn't it? So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, one last thing I want to say. Remember, we had the we spoke about the John Olsen Super Sessions. He stepped up his invitation all this year. We didn't have any details before. I've got the details now. Um, they're having teams. So there's a team of rider, and they get to pick their own photographer and a videographer mm -hmm. and there's actually two teams like that are going to be public open to the public <gasps> so what you can do is you can get on josupersessions.com and you can upload your f uh, video so if you're a rider it's a video like your showreel what about you? could be and if it's a videographer it's like filming that you've done and John Olsen himself are going to pick some teams to enter and you could go to Ara in Sweden and join the, the pros oh, so that would be, be fun yeah where did you join the pros last week Jules? Uh, oh, oh I joined the pros in uh, Italy France and Switzerland and in fact, I followed uh, Jeremy Jones around uh, for a couple days, and uh, this is what happened. I'm standing here on top of the world for the O'Neill Big Mountain Pro, and to give you guys the best possible insight, I'm going to follow the man himself, Mr. Jeremy Jones, living legend. Check him out. See that foxy mama over there, the one with the knee up on it in here. I am the bomb, as they all stop and stare. What they have to say, I should really The face looks awesome, and uh, I'm really stoked to go. I've never been there, never seen it. That's why I came to the Big Mountain Pro to ride stuff like this face. So I'm stoked for it. I was pleasantly surprised when I saw the picture of it. See that foxy mama over there, the one with the knee up on it in here. I am the bomb as they all stop and stare. What they have to say, I should really Uh, yesterday was an amazing day. For starters, we did a, we got to hike what we rode yesterday. So we did this amazing um, hike up this rock ridge that was really fun and just a great way to get ready to ride and um, and then the other thing that made it really special was we rode this incredible face probably the best face I've ever ridden in, in Europe and then today we haven't seen the face because right. we've been stuck down here so how, how does it compare to yesterday's just to get a big idea today's face was big put the big in big mountain um, and it wasn't nearly as rippable um, or didn't have as many options uh, it was a cool face and a cool mountain to ride down but it wasn't um, like yesterday was uh, out of this world you know like um, you know today 
we were really limited with line selection. There was a ton of rocks, ton of things that didn't go. Um, and the things that did go were kind of these open shoots. Um, but it was still a really fun day. And, um, you know, once again, I just love being in the mountains here. What's uh, up? Why are, what's going on right now? We're gonna go judge ourselves. Really? Yeah, we're gonna go uh, pick who's the coolest. Yeah, no, I know who's gonna win. It's gonna be the Americans is one, two, three. And then we're gonna go Swedes because they're pretty cool. Where do we go after that? I don't know. You know, the judging wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be because we had these wonderful pieces of paper that kind of um, gave us a chart, one to ten. So I just, you know, focused on um, everyone's run in front of me and added it up at the end. And Get my brain safe. scrambled from four hours in a room. I don't do well with um, with that. So <laughs> I need fresh air. Can you let us in on maybe your top three snowboarders? Because you're a skier yourself. That's right. Uh, for snowboarders, I think the obvious call is Jones. Jeremy Jones for first. I think God won today, aka Jeremy Jones. Jeremy, for, of course, is Jeremy. Number one. And in first position in the snowboarding category out of the U.S. today, it's Mitch and Right, people, should we do some feedback? Yeah. Let's. I've got Who's one got for one? you. Um, Jake Sparrow is a man or a boy, I don't know which, and he's coming out to Avoriaz next week, and he's wondering where's the best spots to go riding. Oh. So that's good my to advice: if it does keep snowing or raining, raining. <laughs> no, if it keeps snowing, then head over to Chatel. There's loads of good powder areas there, lots of drops and stuff. Um, if you like your jibbing, obviously there's the stash you must check out. Probably better if you're a snowboarder than a skier, a bit more snowboard friendly. Although if you like jibbing and park, there is the baby park and the big uh, Arara park, which are both really well kept. And yeah, there's like six different parks, isn't there, in yeah. the area. And you know what, if you want to find me, you probably should head to the half pipe because that's where I always am. And then maybe you could take me to Changa Bang, buy me a pint, whatever. You'll no, be the sick guy in the pipe, no right? No pressure. I'll be wearing a white carnation. <laughs> that's not true. Uh, Jules, have you got any feedback? Yes, I do from uh, LG Morales over from the States, who uh, hurt, injured his knee. He uh, blew all the CL bits. The a, ACL, the MCL, MCL the PCL. But all them. CLs. Yeah, and uh, so we're sending him a lot of love and a lot of good wishes. And he also Sympathy. sent us uh, lovely pictures from Vail over mm. in the US of A. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's all the feedback we got. Yeah, this, it was uh, a slow week, we got to be honest, yeah. haven't we? But you guys send, send us some us feedback. More stuff. Make it more exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. snowfix at negativegravity.co.uk. Uh, comment on the site, that is actually better, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. much better. And in fact, last year, last season, uh, naked pictures worked really well because that gave us a lot of stuff to comment on. That's so, true. you know, if you um, feel like it. And dogs. There were a lot of pictures of dogs yeah. last year as well. <laughs> Not connected. We don't like nakedness <laughs> and dogs at the same time, they're independent. <laughs> iTunes, you can subscribe yes. in. Facebook, you should join that. And yes. also, you can catch us on the, um, on the TV, on the Extreme Sports Channel, Every on Saturday. Saturday. So that's how you're going to get us. And otherwise, you're going to have to wait till next week. Bye. Bye. I'm wet.